Greetings, I'm JC Pilcher and welcome to JCPC Apologetics. Hello and welcome again to part two of our series dealing with Miles Monroe and the Kingdom of God. Last time we dealt with Miles Monroe and his false gospel of the kingdom. If you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend that you go back and you view that one before seeing this one. Now if you enjoyed that takedown, I hope that you don't get too excited about those sort of videos in the future. This channel is going to be more about Bible teaching and apologetics than it is about taking down false teachers. On occasion I will point some out if I encounter them, but as a general rule that's not the purpose of this channel. If you're looking for a channel that's going to take down more false teachers and expose the, the wrong theology out there, I suggest Chris Roseborough's channel, Fighting for the Faith, or Pirate Christian Radio. So I want to be more beneficial to you than just taking out a false teacher. I don't want to just tear apart Miles Monroe's false gospel of the kingdom, but I want to show you what the Bible actually teaches about the kingdom. What we see with Miles Monroe is what many false teachers do. They have a bad idea that they want to teach, and then they go to the scripture and do what's called proof texting. They search for a verse that will prove their point, or at least can be twisted into proving their point, and then make a whole theology surrounding that. In the case of Miles Monroe, he used the gospel of the kingdom and separated it off from the gospel of Christ. It's not just good enough to say that we reject Miles Monroe's false version of the kingdom. We must also now go to the scriptures and find what the kingdom actually is. We can't just expose the false without then highlighting the truth. Ironically, what we see with a guy like Miles Monroe and teachers that follow that vein of teaching, when they end up focusing their entire ministry about something like the gospel of the kingdom, in the end, the gospel of the kingdom that they preach no way mirrors what the Bible actually says about it. You are fake news. And it's nothing like the gospel of the kingdom that the apostles and Jesus preached about. So like any subject in the scriptures, this is far too complicated for me to cover in a short video. But what I'm doing here, like I plan on doing in most of my videos, is just giving you an overview of the subject matter, and then I'll hope that you, like a good Berean, will go out and search the scriptures to see whether these things are so. With that in mind, let's dive right in. When discussing any earthly kingdom, the first thing you want to talk about is the king himself. As we look at world kingdoms throughout history, one thing that we see very consistently is that the entire kingdom ebbs and flows with the whims of the king. If you have a good king, times are good, everybody is doing well. But if you have a bad king, everything falls apart. And just as quickly as the crown can pass from one person to another, so can the fortunes of that nation. This is similar to the kingdom of heaven. Just as you cannot talk about an earthly kingdom without talking about its king, you cannot talk about the kingdom of God without acknowledging and talking about the king of God's kingdom, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ controls everything sovereignly. Everything is under his providential control. So to divorce Christ from the kingdom would do a total disservice to the subject of the kingdom. We must remember that Jesus Christ is the supreme, unparalleled, sovereign ruler over his kingdom. This is one aspect of Miles Monroe's teaching on the kingdom that is so false. Not only did he say preach the kingdom and not Christ, he also seemed to imply that he didn't think that Christ was the king of the kingdom. Now, he didn't directly say this, but in one clip that I didn't play, and I really won't do it in this video because I'm trying to avoid copyright strikes that I got on my last video, he said that Jesus is the door. He's not the gospel. He is the door only. And of course, then he proceeded to make fun of those who uh, worshipped Christ because he said they were just worshipping a door. Interestingly enough, Miles Monroe never got around to explaining who he thought was the king of the kingdom. I suppose if you pressed him, he would probably say Jesus. But the reality is, he doesn't care about Jesus enough to talk about him as the king of the kingdom. Because in his mind, deep down inside, he sees himself and us believers in his camp of believers as being the kings, the rulers of this kingdom. This is common with a lot of other word faith heretics, this teaching of the little God's doctrine. That they believe that when we get saved by their standard, that we become little gods. It's always designed to exalt us and debase God. It's always a man-centered gospel and not a Christ-centered gospel. Remember what I said last time, Christ is to be in all things preeminent. Now, I know I sound like a broken record at this point, but I want to keep saying it over and over so that you remember. When Miles Monroe divorces Christ from the kingdom, 
He is now outside of the orthodox understanding of what the kingdom is and is no longer operating as a Christian but a cultist. This sort of reminds me of a quote I heard from Paul Washer that said, Everybody wants to go to heaven, they just don't want God to be there when they get there. This is a summation of Miles Monroe's version of the kingdom. It is godless and pagan. According to 1 Timothy 6.15, He, that is Christ, is the blessed and only sovereign. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus is unequivocally the King of kings and the Lord of lords. It is true that we will rule and reign with him, but he is the only sovereign Lord over this realm. Now that we've established who the king is, now we need to know where his territory, his land is. Every earthly king has his land, and so it is with God as well. Now, Miles Monroe teaches that God's kingdom is here on earth right now, and we are to subdue it and have dominion over the land now. The problem with this is that the command to subdue the earth was a command given to all men, not just believers. And Jesus never said anywhere in his teachings that we should set up a kingdom here on earth right now. Now, Miles Monroe's teaching on this, like many other false teachings you find out there, is half true. We will rule here with Christ on earth. This takes us back again to the basics of hermeneutics, that is, Bible interpretation. We can't interpret one verse and ignore other verses that talk about the same subject. Our theology must have a holistic view of Scripture. We can't just cherry-pick verses that we like to the detriment of other ones, which is what Miles Monroe did. So to properly understand the kingdom, we need to realize that it is a already but not quite like many other things that are promised in Scripture. Let me give some examples. Jesus Christ promises to save us from sin totally and completely, but we never reach perfection here on earth. We have the power by the grace of God to overcome sin in our lives, but we never become perfect until we reach heaven. Also, there are promises about healing. The Bible says that God heals all our diseases. And many false teachers have taken that verse to mean that God's will is always that you be healthy, that it's always wrong for you to be sick, and that if you are sick, it's because you don't have enough faith or you have sinned, just like Job's false friends did. The problem with this teaching is it is again one of those already but not quite. There are times where God miraculously heals people, and it's an amazing thing when he does that. But the reality is the death to immortality ratio is still 100 to 0. Everybody dies. Nobody's getting out alive. And when it becomes your time to die, it'll probably come about through sickness or something like that. But when we get to heaven and receive our glorified bodies, sickness, pain, and death will all be something in the past. We will never have to deal with that again. And therefore, the promise that was partially filled in our life is fully realized in our death. So when it comes to the kingdom, it is true that it is here. Jesus said that the kingdom is within you and me, that is, believers. So the kingdom of God is here in the sense that God's believers, some of his elect, are still here on earth. And Jesus, when he was asked about the kingdom, said that the kingdom of God is within you. So the kingdom of God, in a sense, is here now within us. But we will not actually see the physical kingdom set up until the end of days when Jesus comes back as it's described in the book of Revelation and brings the new Jerusalem with him, where we will rule here physically on earth for a thousand years. So now that we've established who the king is, where the land is, and who his subjects are, you might be asking, okay, so now that we understand the kingdom, what did he mean when he said the gospel of the kingdom? I'm glad you asked. Just before Jesus ascended into heaven, he told his disciples, Go into all nations and make disciples of all men, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. To make disciples means to make students or followers. Now, obviously, we can't be students of a kingdom. A kingdom is a physical object. It doesn't teach. We can't follow a kingdom because it doesn't lead. It's a place. So who then are we following? Who is our teacher and our master? Of course, it is Jesus Christ. So in order to preach the gospel of the kingdom, we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. They are one and the same. When somebody is trying to separate the gospel of Christ from the gospel of kingdom, what they are doing is making a false gospel and are trying to lead you astray and you should not listen to them. The gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of Christ are the same thing. The Bible says that there is only one gospel and to teach another gospel is to be accursed. It is not our job to bring the kingdom down here to earth physically. It is our job to call out to anybody who will hear and tell them of the good news of Jesus Christ, to tell them to become citizens of the kingdom. And when Christ grants those whom he has chosen the gift of repentance and faith, then the kingdom grows. And if by any chance you as a listener are not a member of this kingdom, 
and you have not put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ, if you have not repented of your sins, then please click the link at the end of the video that I have called The Gospel. That way you can know what it truly means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, to be saved and transformed by his power. But to rephrase it again, to seek the kingdom of God is to preach Jesus Christ. These two are inseparable. This does not come about in the way that Miles Monroe teaches. He teaches that we bring the kingdom by preaching social change and helping people to gain dominion over their circumstances. But the scriptural way is by God gaining dominion over the hearts of his people and building his kingdom within them. And then one day he will return bringing his kingdom to earth. But until that day comes, it's our responsible to preach the gospel, to be ready in season and out of season, to always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks us of the hope that is within us, and to always remember to keep Christ preeminent in our message. But I admonish you, don't take my word for it. Search the scriptures and see whether these things are so. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment below and feel free to like and share it so others can see it as well. Also, subscribe so that you can keep up to date on future videos. And as always, please check below to see resources that I've used that might help you further your studies. God bless and have a great day.